Hi friends, my name is Mitch and today we're going to continue on the lion in the tree. So the lion seems really interested in this tree. Looks like he really likes that particular tree. And that's okay. So we have, before we started, we had our applicators. We put pan pastel on here. This is pastel matte paper. So one of the things I didn't like about the pan pastel is it just shredded the applicators. Even when you went light, it would just completely shred the applicator. There was not a happy camper. Um, the only redeeming part was these big sponges, which take a little more abuse. And those worked out pretty well, but once you got into the smaller sponges, it did not work out well at all. So I went through, I think, five little sponges, um, unfortunately. So I got all of our pastel pencils. I bought a new sharpener, and it's called, let me go get it, because you have to get the sharpener if you don't have it. It's really nice. It is called the Carl Angel 5. The Carl Angel 5. So it has a little reservoir for your sharpened bits, and it's hand cranked, and it'll take three or four pastel pencils before it gets clogged and to clean it out all you need to do is run a regular pencil through it so what I did was I bought 144 crappy pencils off Amazon for I think 12 bucks and after the third or fourth pastel pencil I'll run one of the crappy ones through it halfway through it and just grind it in and it loosens all the gunk that's stuck in the pencil sharpener so thumbs up for the Carl Angel 5, it was 18 bucks on Amazon. Very, very, very happy with that because that is fairly annoying to have to use all the individual little sharpeners and have to buy replacement blades for them and everything else. So with that said, let's go on to the pastel pencil. So we're going to the eye today and I just wanna get an outline here. So I have to say, I do like pastel matte paper. However, it is egregiously expensive. I'm not happy with that at all. You're basically paying two to three times more than you would with other papers. So, hey, if you're rich, knock yourself out. Mm, just wanna get an outline for this. I do like the paper though. And I do have five pieces I need to use up. So we're gonna use that up together. All right, it's a decent outline. All right, let's take a step back. That looks all right. Could be wider. Like that. Take a look. That looks better. Okay, we'll do that. So let's. Get some action here. With pastel matte, you can actually erase. How refreshing. All right, get a little action on that. Got a little thicker section right there. Did I get credit? This is from wildlifereferencephotos.com. I do not think I got credit for giving credit for that yet. I mean, I don't have to, but I do love that site. OK. 
Okay. So in short, I like pastel matte. I like pan pastel. I don't like pan pastel applicators. I watched a couple of pan pastel videos on YouTube and a lot of the people are using their own applicators. It looks like they just went to the store and got a big sponge and they're using that, which is all right. Probably what I should do is just go to Walmart and get a bunch of sponges and try those instead of using the proper sponge. I don't know. But I do like Pan Pastel. It gives a nice model background like this. And I like the product. Don't like the applicators. Okay, so that comes through here. Outline just right. I think that's okay. All right, so he has a pupil. Well, before we do the pupil, I'm not sure what that is. That is a light grayish yellow ish. Um, I think that's it actually. And he's got dots in it. That is interesting. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get away with that. It's an interesting color. It's like a future yellow. I have a handy future yellow here. A brighter yellow here. Let's see. Um, I think that could work. It looks all right. Okay. So it looks okay, but then you have a lighter yellow inside, but it's not quite bright. All right, that's a little too saturated, but I think it'll work. So above, we have like a darker yellow. Let's see, a darker yellow. Could use this. It's like more of a tan. But I think we can get away with it. Good thing about pastel matte, it takes a lot of layers. Okay, so I think that's going to work. Let me install the pupil and take a look at that from a distance. So let's get the right spot for the pupil. Okay, I think that looks a little cross-eyed. Let's move it over a little. All right, now 
let's fill in that gap with some of this. See if we can undo that. Uh, interesting. We have to go fix that later. It looks really cross-eyed. Let's see, you're supposed to be able to erase with this stuff. Let's get an eraser and see if we can undo that. Okay. Huh, the erasability of this stuff is okay, I guess. It erases somewhat, but it's not exactly to my liking. What we could do is come back, make them look less cross-eyed. By putting the people there, Okay, that looks better. Um, definitely not as weird looking. So, okay, I like that positioning. All right, so let me go back. God bless the erasability on this stuff, right? I think that's an interesting part. When I can erase it, I make a mistake. But when I cannot erase it, I don't make the mistakes. Interesting observation. Okay, um, it'll be all right. And now it has little black dots and little white dots above and below. So let's try the white dots with a pastel pencil. So we have like a um, section down here that's highlight, like that, and section over here. like that, then we have this really bright highlight up here. Like that, so it looks all right. Looks interesting. Why isn't that refreshing? That's odd. Okay, so that's what we get. Could come in here with this. And widen that a little more. That looks all right. And now we have the black dots. The black dots are pretty much everywhere inside of the eye. So let's just come in here and just make some dots. Okay, that works. Come over to the other one. Let's try to get the pupil placement a little better this time. Okay, I like that. So let's sharpen this pencil with a fancy sharpener. Okay, just so wanna get below here.
Okay, and then come up with the upper section as well. All right, could use a blend. Let's see, got a clean blender. I think that's good enough. Or not. blend there so that looks good so again we need the little dot details plus some highlight let's get the highlight in first just using a white pastel pencil here Okay, that looks all right. Um, what I want to do now is to reduce the opacity of this here. Looking at it, I think that's a bit much. Okay, now let's come back within with our dots. More dots, more dots. Good. Could use a blend. All right. That looks all right. Let's zoom out on the reference and sort of compare the eyes. I think I got most of the detail there. Could use a little darkening up at the top, but as far as the eyes go, I think we're all right. All right, so let's move on to the uh, top of the head. You can see I already sort of started with that. So we're gonna get our nice and sharp pastel pencil, and that's just a lot of hairs um, coming down through here. So it looks a lot of individual hairs. So at this point, you just wanna watch TV or something. And we have just a large coverage of these individual hairs. You can rubber band a few of these together and do this. So somebody actually messaged me and asked me about colored pencil on pastel mat. And let me show you the difference real quick. So a colored pencil white that is sharp versus a pastel pencil white that is sharp. The colored pencil makes really, really thin, super, super thin lines. You can see like that. So if you need those super, super thin lines, and that's gonna be good for, let's say whiskers. You come in through here and you have a whisker like that or something. So this one doesn't make as thin a line. And this one is a little darker. So even when you dull out the colored pencil it almost seems like the pastel pencil is almost exactly the same as the colored pencil on pastel matte definitely not true for other surfaces however for pastel matte you can pretty much get away with using a pastel pencil the whole time if you don't mind sharpening it a lot you're gonna go through more pencils but whatever right 
anyway, so you're just going to have to go through here and do a lot of this. And rather than do this for a thousand hours on camera, that does look pretty good. Let's move on to the ear to where we have a little more variety. So, in summary, colored pencil does work. It does make a more precise line, but it's not as prominent as the pastel pencil is, which, which is an important discrimination to, to know between the two, uh, the two types. So, let's give you an example here. For this darker section of the ear, come in and you have this pastel pencil, right? So you're going to go in here and you're going to get a nice coverage with a pastel pencil. So now if you were to do this on velour, and we got our grease pencil, the ivory black Derwent drawing. Let's come in a little below it and do here. And so you see that's wax, that's wax blooming almost immediately that section of the pastel mat, but it's not as dark. So, um, well, that's okay, Sherry, you got those, got the recording. So the pastel pencil is dark because it fills in all the little gaps with dust. The Derwent drawing, what it did was it wax bloom. So, so if you look at pastel mat under a microscope, it looks like this. It, it, and if you look at sandpaper, sandpaper looks like that. So here's a pastel mat, right? So what the, what the, this is doing is filling dust in here and then if you keep going it's filling a little more dust in over here but when you do the Derwent drawing what the Derwent drawing is doing is it's wax blooming the tips of these without going into here so you get not as dark because this is going to be a better coverage with the pastel than just wax blooming the tops of the mountains. So that's why if you're going to go to pastel, and this is pastel mat, if you're going to use pastel mat, I would suggest not using a lot of colored pencil. Um, it's going to be, it's going to just look better if you go with pastel pencil the entire time. In addition with pastel mat, you have to come and blend it out sometimes. What blending out does is if the pastel, if you get a little dust in here, but a lot of dust on here, when you blend it with a stump, it will get this and it'll dump it into there. It'll dump that into there. So that's what blending does. So now you have this coverage here and here, and so it looks better. That's why blending looks a little better and sometimes blending will force the dust from here into here so now the dust is here and it's gone from up top so it gives you the extra ability to put more stuff on top so that's how pastel mat is different than velour so velour is actually a completely different beast no pun intended to our line here So what you can see right here, you can see these gaps. That's because the pastel stuck on top. So we're going to get a blend, blending stump, and we're going to get it from the top and shove it into the gap with the stump. So right here, you can see the gaps. It's just on the top. Then you get the stump and you go over it and you're forcing it into the little mountain valleys there. So pastel mat is more work and more time than velour because of the little mountain tops getting filled with pastels and you have to jam it into the valleys it's just going to take more time so what would normally on velour be a three hour project now becomes a five to six hour project on pastel mat so it's just going to be longer time to get everything done all right so at this point i want to come in and start making some some brownish hairs 
and I'm going to try this. That looks really red. I don't want to do that one. So we can try these other two. So this is like a light brown. It's really red too. That's orangish. Um, this is like a red as well. This might be what I want. What I want is a light brown. Let's see, I have so many browns over here. Uh, try this one. And this is one of the problems with a color chart. Is that it looks good on the color chart for plain white paper or whatever paper you're using. But then you get into real life and it doesn't look as good because you're going on top of other people. Is it worth it to use pastel matte over the velour? Uh, no, it's three times more expensive. Velour goes on sale, pastel matte does not go on sale. And you have to do it in layers. It reminds me of a pure colored pencil painting. So if I were to do something like this in colored pencil, I would have to do four or five different layers for everything. And that's sort of what you have to do with pastel matte because of the pastel getting stuck on the top of the heels. So instead of a quick project on velour where I go one shot, colored pencil, done, have a nice day, next project, I'm gonna have to go over this, like with this red for example. So this is like a reddish brown. And you'll see this with people that do colored pencil. They'll do a layer and then they'll come in with powdered blender or they'll come in with mineral spirits and they'll just start blending the stuff out. So that's sort of what you have to do here to get it off of the valley and into the gap. You gotta come in here with this. So now I have this red layer here. And on top of that, you gotta come in with the browns. So I'm gonna be on a stupid ear for like an hour or more, at least an hour. Because now I have to get a brown and come in with this brown on top of the red. So yeah, it's more work and it's three times more expensive. So this is darker over here. So why did you choose the pastel matte? Well, I was watching some pastel matte people do pastel matte paintings and I wanted to try it. So I bought five pieces and now I have to use up the five stupid pieces of this stupid pastel matte. I do like the surface, however, I'm very impatient and I want to be done already and go into another painting. In addition to one of the downsides of doing this for a video is now I have to, instead of a three hour video, now do another project. This is going to be probably like six hours. All right, so you got some brown over here. Okay, here we are for part two of the gazillion hour project. Um, I got some light brown here. What I can do is spread out the pencil to be here and then it goes light brown on the outskirts.
I guess the other problem is, is if you're up close, the hairs, I don't know, it looks, I mean, it looks all right. It doesn't look amazing. If you're up close, this close, the hairs don't look all that good. So now you have to move out to get the hairs to look nice. And by the time you do that, I just could have done this in the lure in half the time. Twice as expensive, twice as long. And that's my other problem is Velour goes on sale and Pestle Mat does not. I'm not sure what magical properties, Harry Potter properties this, this thing's supposed to have that it never goes on sale, but it never goes on sale. Why would it never go on sale, Sherry? Why is it always full price? Yeah, thanks for watching the video. We spent an hour on an ear. Okay, so now inside of the ear, there's some light. I guess we could use a regular pencil for this. Let's see. It'll be all right. There's some light hairs here. So this is a colored pencil and I just want to sort of play with this on here to get a little of this wax. It's not as prominent as a regular pencil, as a pastel pencil. So we get our pastel pencil. Good news Sherry, I found a, a pencil sharpener that looks nice that actually works good on pastel pencils. See, look how prominent this pastel pencil shows up on here compared to the colored pencil. And that was a fairly sharp colored pencil as well, too. Okay, so that, really in a class, and I'm definitely not one to be teaching a class. Well, here's what you learned today if you're in a class. Don't use pastel mat. Okay. So that's enough of this stupid ear. All right. I'm very happy to have spent 12 hours on that ear. I guess we could come in with um, a colored pencil and just make some more brown up in here. Wow, that doesn't even show up. Yeah, colored pencil's not a happy camper on this crap. I do need some fuzz coming out of the ear. That's light up there. And then you have a shadowy area right in through here. Let's get that shadow area in there.
Okay. So that looks good for spending 17 hours on the ear. It's great. I can't wait to spend 17 hours on the next ear. Really looking forward to it. Okay, so we've got this area here. And got an area here that comes down it's darker. Comes sort of down like through here. Sherry, I'm glad you could keep me company on the 19 hours of years. Okay, so that looks all right. And I got a little darker section here. And then as that comes down, it turns brown. So, all right. Sharpen my pencil a little bit. Get it razor sharp. These little fine little hairs. Not exactly razor sharp, but it's good enough. Uh, cool. So let's go down to the sides here and start with that. So right here, got all these white hairs coming across through here. The lion looks so sweet it makes you want to hug it. Not a bad idea if it's well fed. The lion is hungry, however. I would encourage against hugging it. I gotta say this though, using only pastel pencils, not pressing really hard with colored pencils is nice on the wrist. I'll say that. And the pan pastel is absolutely beautiful on the wrist. I know Jason Morgan absolutely adores this crap. And I do love me some Jason Morgan. But, uh, I guess the wrist, the ease on the wrist is probably my favorite thing. I guess there's so many downsides though from the required time to the expense and I'm a starving artist so I would not mind cheap stuff.
I guess my main concern would be if you're doing commissions, let's say you're doing commissions and you're not expensive, so you're one of the cheaper guys, this would probably do you wrong in a variety of ways from the biggest being the time spent would be more, so you're making less per hour. I think, but if you're just like, I come home and I make a lot of money and I'm just going to sort of get, you know, have football in the background or have Twitch going or something like that. And I just want something easy on the wrist. I don't care how long it takes. I'm just doing this for myself then I think this could be a, a good alternative here to Velour. But if you're doing this for money um, and you want to get cranked out quick, I would use something else. Alright, let me move back. That looks pretty good. You need to start commissioning presidential portraits. No. I don't think that my skill level is even moderately close to doing that. I guess I could do the president's dog. Like, didn't Richard Nixon have, like, a ton of dogs? There's many people that are so much better than me that not really sure I can compete though. I mean, look at um, uh, uh, look at Jason Morgan for example. Look at his pastel or look at his pastels and then look at his oil paintings. Just amazing. I'll never, never, never be at that level. That that's hardcore. I mean, he is at hardcore competition level. And the funny part about Jason Morgan is you look at some of his old stuff. He posted some of his old stuff the other day and it and it's like just jaw dropping realistic. I mean if you if you put well if you put that on social media and he asked, is this a photograph or a painting, ninety percent of the world would say that's a photograph. And even if you get up close to it, like I zoomed in. And the detail is so intense that even zoomed in, it's hard to tell it's not a photograph. So when you start zooming in all the way and you can't tell if it's a photograph or not, that skill level is many, many, many years beyond anything that I'll be anytime soon. And that's why I like Jason Morgan. He's also such a nice guy. Like, it's hard to find somebody with, like, an advanced degree of skill that's just a nice person, and he's, like, super nice. Like, you, like you message him and ask him a question, he'll message you right back. Super, super nice guy. That's why I subscribe to his Patreon, and that's why I have bought almost all of his products. I want to make sure that he makes it. If I can contribute, then I want to. Alright. How's that look? That looks really good. Like for a moment I thought that was the photograph. That's not bad at all. Let's see, what am I missing? The eyes are too bright, number one. Um, wow, this looks pretty good. Other than this section up here it needs to be brighter. And then inside of the ear needs to be darker. Where did I put my sharpie? Okay, 
Sherry, what do you think? Let's try the Sharpie. Looks good. Looks nice. And I guess that's a good thing about this pastel paper. Sure, I got a fancy sharpener. Carl Angel 5. It actually does pastel pencils well. However, every third pastel pencil you need to go back in and uh, use a regular pencil. Otherwise, it gets clogged up. But just for pastel pencils, it's nice. So what I did was I bought 144 regular pencils off Amazon for $14 or $13. So then I run a regular pencil through there after every third pastel pencil. Okay, so get a brown. And I'm going to get this brown and sort of spooge it out of the eye there. that coming through here all right see that's the thing again this regular pencil is just wax blooming the top of the mountains so got to come in here with a pastel pencil okay so the pastel pencil is going like this Thanks for the share, Lene. All right, then we just come down here. And thanks for the share, Sherry. Hey, it rhymes, sort of, I guess. All free art instruction is a good thing. I think the most fascinating thing about this paper is the fact that when I can erase, I make mistakes. But when it's impossible to erase, I don't really make that many mistakes. I think that's my most interesting thing that I've noticed. Maybe it's something psychological. All right, there's a little interesting tidbit of white right here. that and there's one right here like that and then there's some interesting hairs like 
through there. Okay, so it looks all right. So now, get my colored pencil just to give it a little variety. Coming in through like that. So that looks all right. Um, there's also some interesting brown tidbits through there. And it's not reddish, but I'm gonna use red anyway. Because I want the eye to pick up on something interesting and colorful in there. I'm just pressing really, really light just to give that interesting effect. Because I think there's a clear difference between like a pure section with only black and white and then when you introduce some color into it, it gives it a little spark. So that's my theory. That's the give it some spark theory. Ah, oh, this is an issue. This is way, way too light. He does so look like he's staring at me. He's like, I'm gonna hop out of the tree and eat that fat guy. Okay, so let's go back into let's go back into here, and I want to get some of these little lines through there. I'm gonna to have to more order more art supplies. What's that guy's name again that you were talking about earlier? Jason Morgan. Uh, Jason, Jason, like the guy on Friday the Thirteenth. Jason Morgan. You should Google him and he comes right up. He's been doing this for like 20 years. Yeah, he's got tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. So he has a Patreon channel that I subscribe to and it's only like five bucks or four bucks and nine bucks. And you can watch all sorts of videos. That's what I like about Patreon. You subscribe and then you can get all the videos they've made before not just the ones they're making now. Are you on Velour? No, this is Pastel Matte. I ranted earlier about Pastel Matte. I have not ranted yet about the lady across the street that's staring in my window earlier. I don't know what was so interesting. I was oil painting. in there. This is really easy on the wrist. I have to admit, 
I ranted so much about this, but in reality, man, this is super easy on the wrist. And I say that if you just tuned in because I do computer programming during the day. And when I come home at night, playing video games and whatnot hurts the wrist because you've been doing it all day. So I went into art to have something that doesn't hurt. And then I do some of the colored pencil stuff does hurt because you press hard. You think when you press hard, it's just sort of a painful. Lene, did you ever get your paper? Patreons, huh? Oh, you finally got it? Wow, how do you like it? Okay, I like that. Put a little bit of colored pencil on top of this pastel. Let's see how that works out. It doesn't, it does not work out at all. That is just no bueno. That is no bueno times 72. Okay, so how much time we got? Wow, we've gone over an hour. We just got like part of the face done. That's brutal. Lene, this is going to be a 175 hour project. Okay, got some hairs coming down through there. Welcome back to hour 19. Let's see. So I want to get I picked up some different colors. I picked up these four. So that'll give me a nice tan, which I wanted. A dark brown. And a sort of a saturated brown and a saturated tan kind of thing. So these are all Carbothello pencils. Lene 30. <laughs> 35 years in the tech industry? My God. I can imagine.
Okay, so now we're going to come in with this tan. And then on the outskirts of the tan, we have a white. Low battery. that. Oh no. Come over here, silly. These iPads do not last long on high bright. High bright candlelight. All right, now we have a hair that goes there. Got a hair that goes up here. That. Like that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And we got hairs go here. Like that. Like that. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, could use a little more tan in between here. Um, to bring that out and then it could use a little more of the dark browns in here. All right, that looks pretty good. Me being OCD does not help the turnaround for this painting, drawing. I got this one guy that gets upset when I say painting. He's like, dude, it's a drawing, you're using pencils. I'm like, well, I use pastels too. Pastels are painting medium. So I use half pastels and half pencils. That's a drawing slash painting. And then he put me on ignore. Right, so I'm just getting some, some of this area down through here. And I'm using this dark brown 
And I believe that I'm going to blend this. Because I think that's what the lion, lioness, wants me to do. He, she, it is looking at me like, why aren't you blending me, homie? Uh, I think I went too far on that. So let me see, get this and just give it a blend. See, normally on velour, this would happen naturally and you would not have this step. Because on velour, it's nice and blurry and all that. So in case you just join me, what I'm doing is blending and I'm doing that because Pastel mat has a bunch of mountains and ridges, and when you put the pastel on there the first time, it'll sit on top of the mountains, and it won't go into the ridges. Most of it won't go in. So you have to blend it, which means you shove it into the ridges. Now you free up the mountains to have more pastel on top. So in case you see people talking about how many layers you can get, that's basically what you're getting is the mountains and the ridges. So now when I go over, I'm getting more mountains than ridges at this point. So if you come here in a race, you're going to be erasing for the most part most of the mountains and leaving ridges unless you push really, really hard. I'm not happy with that at all. Uh, come in here with a white maybe. I need a lighter color, and that's not doing me, so we're going to try this, and I think that's, that looks okay now. Okay, so that looks okay, now we'll come in with the black. And I want to get this nice and dark here. He's got like a curly section here. I want to sort of represent that. got this coming up. I want to represent that as well. Let me come up through here. Okay, so I like that. Looks all right. Oh, so now we're gonna come back with the tan and come out here with some of these hairs. That's, that's not bright enough. What about this yellow? Come in here with this yellowish color. That looks weird. If we're gonna do it over here, we need to do a little over here too. Okay, I think it's going to be more of a white. And then that's black up here. Where am I like that? This is like a dark area over here. I don't want to draw a solid dark area. What I want to do 
is just give this hint of dark right through there. Problem is if you draw a solid dark area and try to draw lines over it, you will be spending your entire life trying to draw those lines. So it's best to make your dark area a series of hair looking strokes. And that way you don't have to compensate so much when you're coming back through. Because you will have a second pass and it'll be with a lot of hairs. You can make it easy for yourself by not putting in that much. All right. So now we come back through with the white. You get like I'm talking about with these lines. So when I'm pressing hard down here, it's light press because of these not as prominent lines and they're in shadow. So the shadowy hairs need to be not pressing hard. Okay, and then as you're coming up through here, we have harder pressing lines because they're more prominent. You don't have to get every one exact because again, nobody is looking at this lion. Nobody knows all the little hairs and how they sit. If this was your aunt or uncle, you'd know exactly what they look like, all the hairstyles they had. But nobody's ever seen this lion before, so you can sort of get away with making some of it up. Over here, we've got more prominent hairs over here as well. Make sure you get just a few. Like that. Okay, so it looks pretty good. Um, now we have like a darker brownish area down here. And I want to use this reddish brown. Because I just want some color in here. It's a problem we have with anything that's just black and white. You lose a lot of saturation. And you can get that back by coming in with more saturated color like this. And that goes back to my more theory where once this gets behind glass, it's not going to look as good as you think it's going to look. In fact, it may look absolutely terrible. So you need more saturation, you need a little more of everything. So this area, I think I brought it from the ear down a little too much, so let's bring this up a little. So I think the ear is a little too close to the eye. So we're going to move it up by just sort of compensating here. this there we go move that up a little bit make sure the hairs are going this right direction otherwise it looks terrible down through here, get a little detail in. And we did not come down enough. So that's more of a dark brown than a black. As we come down through here.
Okay, it looks all right. How long have I been streaming? Wow, an hour and a half. It's only 16 minutes here. So the stream will stop and I'll start it again. I guess I'll go double shot here. Let's see if I can get away with that. I think I can. Be right back. <laughs> 